Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Lamar Jackson, week three, the Ravens at Jerry's World, absolutely punching him in the mouth, fired up, locked in, buckle up the chin strap. We got a bunch of quarterback run game, fired up. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great, inexpensive way to get even more Quarterback School content, but you hop over there and you get deep, deep dives, nuance, take usually full game analysis, diving into the minutia, the details of high-level quarterback, offense, and defensive play. Hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Lamar Jackson, the Ravens, put the absolute smackdown on the boys. Actually, kind of hold had to hold on at the end, but this is a world class plan. This is straight up bully ball at the line of scrimmage. A little zone read escort here. The thing when you're playing against a guy like Mark Micah Parsons, a game wrecker, is you want multiple looks, and sometimes it can be as simple as not blocking him. Now it's not going to be just hey, don't block him, let him do what he does. But we're going to run zone read escort. So we're going to have that bluff block come across. And we are just reading what 11 does. He can't be right. So if he goes up the field, we just hand it to the back. Thank you very much. If he goes under the escort, so if he squeezes this thing tight, we're going to quarterback run. And we've got that escort lead block out in front of us. And if you notice the motion, which I'm sure you did here, pre-snap, go to school on the motion. We come across. Guess what? They run with him. So one less dude over here for the alley. Just a beautiful job. There were some really outstanding offensive architecture, run game architecture going on for Baltimore. And this is just way too easy. And the thing that I think most teams love about this zone read escort play is that it gets the quarterback running, but he's on the edge. He's on the perimeter. I mean, that is so easy. A few plays later, we're going to run bash GT. So we're going to hand it to the bash going up top. We're going to arc block the sniffer type. And again, it's too easy. Now, it helps when you're missing tackles. That's about the nicest thing Six did all day there is that tackle at the end. But when you're reading the C-gap defender, so again, a lot of C-gap reads here. This is who we're reading. And he stunts. So he's on some sort of run game stunt, and that's the guy we're reading. Can he tackle the bash? There's the bash. Bash just stands for back away. He cannot. Okay, let me answer it for you. So you just hand it to him. Let him eat. Then on the front side, we're just running GT. I'm assuming he's going down. Everyone's going down here. And then we're kick, wrap. Beautiful. And we come back and Lamar Jackson runs it between the tackles here. Gap runs, which is a, probably another conversation for a different day. But that is an easy read. And that, again, is a big chunk. It's like another punt return left. So again, the, the Cowboys, not only were they getting, I think, physically beat up and missing tackles, but they were also getting schemed up. Your boy Paul Gunther was in a blender trying to defend the run here. And again, if he were to keep this thing, he would get tackled by 90 because that's the read, right? But if that wasn't there, that GT is looking pretty good as well. Get out on the edge. And again, that's all Lamar Jackson and this Baltimore run game. Next one here. We've got a little naked going on down here to the bottom. We're going to shift to I. I write condensed, fake toss up top, hit the tight end and the bang flat. So he's going to secure the edge, get into the flat, and then this is just way too easy. Punt return right. I mean, how many big chunks in the first series have we gotten down the sideline? So shift to I, fake toss to the left, come out to the right, wide open, don't miss a layup. He puts it right on him. Nice block by Flowers down the field as well. And that's a big, big chunk. So again, intentional with the movement here, right? We go three by one wing, shift to I, everything's going up top to the left, fake toss. And again, on these condensed nakeds, I feel like I draw it every single time, so might as well draw it again. Corner, someone in the over, someone in the flat. And it's just that simple. This time, we end up getting it right here, wide open. Next time, we get it right here. They call the same exact play, the same exact motion. Again, big chunk. 
really well done. Now, this wasn't the most exotic passing game, but it didn't have to be. They were running it so well. They were controlling the line of scrimmage, controlling the clock. But little plays like this that turn into big chunks that are easy throws. These are glorified extended handoffs. And that's wide open. My goodness. Next one here again. Poor Paul Gunther is just in a blender trying to defend this thing. Again, zone read escort. A little bit of a different construction how they get there. But we've essentially got two tight ends leading the way for Lamar Jackson. And we're not blocking Parsons again. So game wrecker. He can't get lined up. Doesn't matter. Escort front pylon. Now I'm going to talk about the front pylon thing the next time we see it from the end zone. But this play is just, it, it, I'm not going to say it's too easy. It's just excellent construction. So again, zone read, escort. I've already talked about the escort part of it. Last time he came from the sniffer position, bluffed and lead up. This time it's more from the fullback type position. Where he's coming out and he's leading up. Now we also get an arc block from the uh, nub tight end up top. So we've really got two guys out there. Again, it's just a simple read off Parsons. Can he tackle the back? Yes, we're going to pull it. Great. We're going to go out there, and now we're running to the front pylon. It's just an excellent job here of run game offensive architecture. Whoop. Got him. And again, 11 is a dynamic athlete. We see his speed later. But you want to give him multiple looks. You want him getting hit from all different angles and not getting blocked, where he has to make a read. Whoop. See ya. And then my thing here is I want to see it. I know I've talked about it in some videos. It's going to be somebody like Lamar Jackson. Instead of doing this, man, all I want to see is don't even go in the end zone. Take the ball in your right hand and hit the pylon over and just run back. Okay? It's free. You can have it. I'm giving it to you. I've talked about it for years. I want to see somebody do it at some point. Instead of run the urge to get in the end zone, just hit the ball with the pylon. I want to see it. Next one, next one here, third and three. Again, bash GT. So bash up top, GT, GT down here to the bottom. Again, we're given 11 different looks. Now, this is one of those ones, okay, tread lightly here. I don't love giving running advice to ball carriers. I think the best way to do it is to say run through common color. But... We miss a huge hole here, right down the middle of the field. You want to get right off that deuce. The big cut is usually out the backside A. Now, I know it's third and three, so you want to make sure you get a first. But this is a cut that Lamar Jackson can see damn near every time. So I'll show you from the back here how it opens up right down the middle. But we get the first. Again, running gap runs, Lamar Jackson inside the box. Not sure you want to do it all the time, multiple times a game, every single week. But when it's there, it's a thing of beauty. So again, bash GT, we're reading this player right here. Here's the bash, back away run. And now on the front side, normally the front side is a gap down backer. So gap down backside backer. What they do right here, I love, he bluffs and arcs. So we're putting 11 in a blender again here. Okay, so he's got a different look at him. We're then going to get the gap down deuce back to the backside backer. And guess what? This backside backer. He runs out of there because he thinks he's going to go tackle the bash. Okay. We're gapped down here, and now we're going to be kicking out Parsons. So kick here, and then we are wrapping to the play side inside linebacker. Boop, right there. So what I'm saying here from Lamar is that as you ride this thing out, and again, it's super easy with the clicker and all the different colors and the markers, but I just want you to think, I always think of this play as find the double team and get as tight as you can right off the double team in the big plays on all these gap runs happen out the back door. Okay, they very rarely happen a huge run this way. So what you want to do is get right behind the wrapper, the guy pulling right here, and you want to be looking for the first opportunity for a big cut back the other way. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but when it happens, it looks like this. So watch that left tackle right there. Okay, you got to feel that common color. Where's the common color? And if we're going to give running advice to running backs, the, one of the best running quarterbacks of all time. Common color is right here. Okay, so we want to be pushing this thing and get right there. And again, you could probably go all the way there. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's third and three. I get it, get the first down. 
But I think as you look at this thing again and play it out again, you can see this thing open in the middle. Get right off that deuce block. Next one here, second and nine. I really, really like this play. So I'm not a huge fan of quick outs. We're going to get a quick out down here to the bottom, and we're going to get a swing screen up top to Henry. Now, quick out, make a guy miss, big time play. Now, normally, I say about quick outs that it's a lot of risk for a small reward. Usually, you're running right out of bounds. The reason he is able to get this in bounds, okay, lock in with me here, is this is gun one-step footwork. Catch, one-step throw. You know, I feel like I talk about this damn near every video. So I really want to sit in here and own this, okay? Whatever the hell this drawing is. One step, okay? Gun, one step. The easiest way to think of this is gun footwork is just minus two. Okay, so if you were under center here and we were going to throw a quick out, it would be three step. So we're in the gun, we minus two, that's one. Does that make sense? We're going to throw an intermediate route under center, five step. In gun, minus two, now it's three. So for me here, catch one step is the critical part of this. And he throws a great throw and the guy misses the tackle. But the reason he's able to stay in bounds is because it's not that one-two step you see across the league and across football. Catch, one step throw. Look at it. Let it wash over you. You are welcome. We're hot even. We got a free runner right in our face. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Look at that big chunk. All because... Lamar Jackson gets the ball out of his hand with enough time for us to make a move. So I just love to see it. I really do hope it catches on across football. I, I just feel like it would help the quick game, especially as the quick game becoming more and more important with all this, you know, quote unquote, two safety coverage. But you can see here, if we didn't like the quick out to the bottom, you can see the screen up top, right? Center going out, multiple guys out to the left. And they're actually looks like they're trying to, are they throwing a screen to the tight end back there? Coming back across? That looks like they're going to get it to 80, actually. Like Henry is a decoy. Does that make sense? So this throw, it looks like we're setting up everything to look like this. And then he puts his foot in the ground. He goes out, puts his foot in the ground, and comes back in like this. So a very cool kind of PSO, pass screen option. Ooh, you're welcome for that. One step. Let it wash over you. And of course, it turns into a big play because the fighting Al Harris's cannot tackle in the background. Come on, Al. Al and Paul, what a combo. Next one here, third and six. Quarterback pin and pull versus the dreaded Zimmer double mug. Man, I feel like I talk about this a decent amount on this channel as well. You catch a double mug like this. Right? And I saw enough of it back in the day with Zim in Cincinnati that defenses or offenses will immediately try to get on the edge. And so third and six here, pretty special to be able to run it on third and six in any look. But here's that double mug look. So linebacker types walked up into the A-gap. Immediately, offenses will want to run on the perimeter. And whether it's wide zone, pin and pull, crack, whatever you want to do. I, I just, I think it's an easy way to, again, there's no second level of the defense. So you pierce the first level of the defense. Now you've got a great opportunity to run. Again, the big guys out in front. Great job by Lamar finishing that thing. Again, a full catalog of runs, right? We've seen Escort. We've seen Bash GT. Now we see Q pin and pull. <laughs> Look at 82. The tight end getting out there once he gets his mouthpiece. Thunder. Boom. Well, the guy gets tripped by his own guy. But you can see the big guys getting out. That's a pretty impressive block actually by the center to snap and pull. Get all the way out there. Hell yeah. Next one here. Oh, no. I'm going to call this inverted Hank. Uh, we're going to talk about, there's one thing I like about how they run Hank here. There's another thing where I think Lamar Jackson probably doesn't do the correct footwork here because he's ready to throw well before the hook is ready. So you can see kind of the timing of this play, how it doesn't work. If you watch Lamar's feet here, he's going to take a one step. So catch one step. Remember, I was so excited about the, Quick game one step, well, intermediate one step, not it. So catch, he's ready. The hook's not ready. Now he's got to essentially make like a glorified check down throw away. So the part that I like about this play, inverted Hank, again, for all two new people to the channel, is sit over the ball. And then the traditional Hank is hook, hook, 
flat, flat, and then inverted Hank. And I don't, I, I'm the only one I know that calls an inverted Hank. So you just got to deal with it. Is this one step on the outside hooks on the inside. And you would do this because you want your wide receivers on more safety type guys in zone coverage. But the part that I love that I've never seen before is that the number three here, the sit versus man coverage versus man coverage. Hank sucks in my opinion, but I like the idea of having him a, the ability to run like a juke route here to not be a static sit over the ball. So that part I'm all about. And then again, we've already talked about gun footwork, right? Under center, Hank is five, no hitch to the sit. So five right there, one, and then two to the squeeze, two to the squeeze, whoever takes away the sit. Well, in gun, minus two, you're welcome, three no hitch right here, or three hitch, three reset, whatever you want to say. It's not catch one step. So catch one step, he's ready to throw this right away. Okay, if you want to skip this, maybe they read it different. It's certainly there, whether this is one or this is two, it's there. He's ready to throw. He's not ready in his route. So the timing, you can see the importance of the timing tethered to the depth of the routes and the drops. So watch this thing up top. First off, let's watch the number two hook up top. Lamar's looking right there. He's ready to throw. The hook is not ready to catch it. He's still got another five yards in his route. And it's there. We're just not synced up. Now watch the tight end, the number three down here. Instead of running that sit, he kind of runs that runaway. I kind of like that. Now, all of a sudden, I kind of like it a little bit more. It's growing on me, inverted Hank. I wouldn't call it in a real game. That would be hilarious. But I could see having a slightly better answer versus man coverage. So, again, this to me is more Lamar Jackson not doing the correct footwork. Or if this is the correct footwork, then it's obviously not tethered to the depths of the route. So, it's not great, Bob. Nice job just avoiding the sack with the check down throw away. Next one here, third and eight. So I really praised the Ravens on their plan with Micah Parsons, especially in the run game, especially early in this run game, how they were giving him different looks, whether it was leaving him unblocked, reading him, bluffing him, all sorts of things. This is the type of stuff that causes nightmares for offensive line coaches. So Parsons is over the center. He absolutely gaps the center. I mean, they, most centers when they don't have either book in there and a 5-0 look, so five one-on-one -on -one blocks up front, the center has no chance with the two-way go versus Parsons. So we're able to get a completion. We're not going to get a first down. But my thing here, and this is really the details and nuance of third down pass pro or third down in general, is this is six-person protection. We're running uh, drive out. So drive down here to the bottom, out, slot out, up top. It's a good call. It's fine call, whatever. It's six-person protection. My thing here is if the back, oh, that's a big back. If the back has this defender right here and he's not blitzing, technically he's green-dogging or he's adding on if the back blocks, I would want the back to exit through 11. So if 11 is here, he needs to exit through one of the A gaps. If 11 is over here, he needs to exit through the B or the C over here to just be a guardrail, to be able to knock him back on. There's no way I want him avoiding 11. Basically, at the end of the day, you cannot avoid 11. You have to exit through his ribs. And again, it's easy for me to say, but I do think you can be very intentional, especially in third down pass protection, to be able to say, if you're the back here and you've got 50, okay, the... 40 or 30 backer to the left. He's not blitzing. He's green dogging you. Exit through the right A gap right there. You got to be hunting up. You got to be searching 11. We got to have a better plan in the pass pro world for 11 there because he wrecks that play. Next one here, 90 seconds left to go. First half. I think this is one of the few kind of misreads in the quarterback run game for Lamar Jackson. This to me, again, is zone read escort. Again, we're reading Parsons on the left. He's under the split flow player. So can he tackle the back? Yes. To me here, this is a pull read. And we got to keep it and have it on the edge. So again, easy for me to say, 
And Parsons does a little bit better job here, kind of squeezing this thing, playing two. But the way that I, and again, I've never specifically asked anybody in the league how they read it. I think this is most universally how it's read. As he comes across, this split flow player who's bluffing, if he goes under it, the quarterback's got to pull it. If he goes over it, then we hand it to the back. And and it's really that simple. Now, maybe this happens a little slower than Lamar would like, but I think if he had to ask himself, he would probably say, yeah, I made the wrong read here. As you can see, this thing's going to pop again down here to the bottom. And again, there, there are just no answers other than, hey, we'll luck into maybe the quarterback not making the right read in this run game. There's space everywhere. Next one here, touchdown pass. It's a pretty wild one. This is some poor safety play down here to the bottom. Holy moly from six. Uh, I'm going to say that this is supposed to be the route from Bateman. You know, he might be in kind of a scramble mode here if he feels or knows Lamar Jackson is out of there already to come back out of this. But he doesn't really look, right? Like if you're seeing seven at the top right of the corner, like he doesn't look back and know that Lamar Jackson's scrambling. That thing looks like it's built in. And if that's built in, that's world-class design because he's wide-ass open. And he does the safety over there dirty. I mean, there really is no answer for the safety at the bottom of the screen to do what he does. You know, I don't think there's anything special here about this concept. To me, this is just, well, that's not true. I think this is, if this is the route, like he's supposed to come in and then come back like this, that's pretty outstanding when you look at, okay, we'll call this some version of smash up here. And then we're catching essentially red two here. And this corner or this safety, I mean, he's in a full-on blender in the middle of the field. This this is wide open space. And I mean, there's really nothing else going here. We're running like chip checkdowns, chip checkdowns here. So if this isn't there, who knows what this is supposed to look like, but this is beautiful. If you've got enough time to run routes like this, I mean, that is killing them. Six is absolutely shredded playing safety here. Yo, Jesus. Wide open, right on the O. Right on the boys. Don't do it to them. Again, Lamar's buys a little time here to the right. This thing takes forever. But we've got, you know, seven person chip going on here. We don't even need the chip. Your boy 11 is taking a break. So we've got all sorts of time. Great time to call this as well. Again, game planning, play calling. Love it. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already, please like. Subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It does mean a lot to me, so thank you for taking the time and doing that. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have courses on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offense available for you, so hop over there and enroll. You can check out the courses at the new Quarterback School website, theqbschool.com. Hop over there. There is a fun, interactive way where you can ask me anything to dive into the library of content available through the channel. And then finally, make sure to follow me across all social media platforms. I sincerely appreciate your support. As for the video, let's get back to it. All right, so now we are into the second half. All right, first play of the third quarter, often my favorite offensive play call of the game. Just simple zone read down here to the bottom. We're going to arc the tight end, read 90. Simple surf squeeze. We pull it. We get our quarterback out on the edge again. I mean, just imagine meeting at halftime if you're the Cowboys. Say you're Paul and Al up in front of the unit. Hey, guys, we're going to stop the quarterback run. No, we're not. Whoop. Easy, right? It doesn't take a, doesn't take a hit. That's the thing about some of these run games. You run inside the tackle box, it can be brutal. You get outside, you utilize Lamar Jackson's speed. This is a simple read. Again, watch the tight end to the bottom. He's arcing and pinning. Arc, pin, got him. Just a beautiful job there. Super easy, simple call. But again, second half, still no answers from the boys. It's not a huge chunk play, but you can see here, they've got no chance to defend this quarterback run game. Next one here, third and one. I put this one on here really for fun, but then it turned into probably one of the worst safety run fits I've seen in a long time. Again, you know, Lamar or uh, Derrick Henry here, straight arm to hell, beautiful. What six is doing here? <laughs> okay, watch. He is 
in my opinion, probably fitting the B gap on the left side between the guard and the tackle. No idea. Him just guessing like he's going to run in there and make some hero play, just totally abandoning probably his run fit. And then they get pierced like this on third one. This is just bully ball. This is whatever this is. And again, I don't have to know what the front is. You can just do the math and we'll do the math from behind. Whatever him just jumping like this <laughs> creates this huge cavern. And Derrick Henry shows some great patience here. And then, you know, explosiveness to get through this thing. Beautiful straight arm, agility, strength, all that stuff is great. But this is a terrible run fit from six. This is losing football. Well, what is he doing? Again, just do the math on the fits. Right? Like every gap here, I'm assuming we're here. Right? Like that. that's pretty universal for you just to say, fuck it. <laughs> what? What? I mean, this is some JV stuff right here. Zimmer is going bananas. He would literally be losing his skull coming out of his skin. Oh, my God. And you get a straight arm. Wow. Second and two. Again, motion. Again, zone read escort. This time, though, Parsons showing off the speed. I mean, again, I think I've been pretty explicit of the fact that I think when you play a game wrecker like 11, you have to have a, a multi-layered plan. You don't want to sit there and block him one-on-one -on -one for sure. You would love to double-team him, team him. You want to bluff him. You want to read him. You want to give him multiple looks. And we've already seen this zone read escort play. I'm not going to draw it up again, but we're reading Parsons. He goes under the escort player. We're pulling it. But I want you to watch the acceleration from 11 here. He is not quitting. This is some speed right here. He's running with Lamar Jackson. That is crazy. That is crazy fast. I can't even begin to comprehend how fast that is for an edge player to look like he's, he borderline caught up to him. I mean, he pushes him out for sure. That is crazy. Next one here, again, zone read. This time, after the motion, up top to the nub. So the nub's going to arc out, and we're just going to run zone read, read 94. It's like they've never seen it before. It's like they're playing against Pat White in 2005 or something, and we've never seen zone read. Read 94, head up on the tight end to the right. He's going to squeeze down. It's an easy read. I mean, those, those are simple, simple reads. And yeah, Lamar takes a bit of a hit there. But that's way too easy to be able to run the ball. We have to have better answers in the quarterback run game. And again, are you going to run Lamar this much for an entire season? I think it would be difficult. But on games like this, opponents like this, on the road, statement wins, you got to have it. I think you, I think you absolutely can do this. He certainly has the skill set to do this. I'm not sure anybody has the ability to withstand this kind of run punishment over the course of a season, but I love it. One game. Next one here, third and 14. Really the only, like, quote-unquote, poor throw from Lamar Jackson. We're going to throw a little screen down here to Flowers, the number two, and we just skunk that thing. You know, full-on Tebow right at his ankles, never has a chance. So I can't tell if he doesn't quite get the snap here. It doesn't look like a clean operation. Again, I try to say pretty often on these uh, throws that these throws are difficult. They, they're they not as easy as these guys in the league or high-level college football players uh, make them look. And so when you see throws like this, you know, I think of the Bryce Young one a couple weeks ago. I'm not as surprised maybe as other people because it is hard to catch it, grip it, rip it. But nowadays, these guys do these throws so much that you're almost surprised when you see when you see this kind of miss. And so just a better ball. And again, I think a better snap would help us here. I'm getting spider cammed here a little bit, but still, that's just an excuse. We, we can throw a better ball than that. We probably also don't need to like flail away from this thing, be falling sideways and skunk that thing. Next one here, second and eight. We're going to run the same naked we did earlier. So we're going to fit to eye. I write condensed, fake the toss up top. No to the tight end, yes to the over. I mean, no one around either of those guys. Now, it's not as big of a chunk. But it's an easy game, especially in a second half like this where you're running it, just beating the hell out of somebody at the line of scrimmage. You come out, run a simple, easy, fake toss naked. I mean, you, you could see here, he could actually go back to the tight end right there. 
regardless. Easy, simple play. I just felt like their plan, their ability at the line of scrimmage to dominate in the quarterback run game, and then you layer in these little simple, easy throws. Really frustrating day for the boys on the back end. Next one here, third and three. Now we're going to miss the little stick down here to the bottom. I think this is to Andrews. There's a few things here for me that I don't necessarily love. Don't love Likely's route. I'm a, this is normally supposed to be a flat. I wouldn't say you'd want to settle up like however he settles up. And if that's the design of the play, I really dislike it. I'll pause this thing when we get out to the motion down here. So to me here, stick is stick. And you can potentially run out of it versus man. And it's usually paired with a flat and then a clear. Okay, so if that's the play, I think this route from likely is not it. He kind of runs here and like settles. I don't like that because they're kind of like in the same space. Okay, but let's just imagine he ran it correctly. So stick like that. And then we've got a clear out here. Well, when this is paired with what I'm calling dragon or slant flat up top, and you get middle field closed like this, especially if you know it's man with corners over up top here, I'm, I'm almost universally going to throw this slant or at least think I'm going to throw the slant. So I would probably question the read here and this route and then the decision to even throw it. So for me here, the ball probably should go up top to the slant flat. Maybe they read it different. I would say universal football would say work the slant flat versus man because you might get a pick or a rub just like this even though they kind of do a good job Cowboys-wise, the fighting Al Harris is fighting through that dragon, but that slant's going to hit as opposed to a contested, what I think of stick as more traditionally a zone beater because you don't really have that true runaway out of Andrews. And again, you can see he thinks 89 is going to run out of it and he settles up. So not on the same page. Again, I think of stick as more zone-ish and dragon as more man-ish but just not on the same page there. Next one here. So it's third and six. The Cowboys battle back down three. They've still got two timeouts, so they're going to have a chance to get the ball back for sure. We got to convert here. This is an excellent job converting here. We're going to throw it to the new number two on what I'm going to call is a speed out. I really like this design. Kind of a funky way to get to a seven-person protection. So Parsons is double teamed. Us to throw a speed out versus free access, meaning no bump. No pressure at the line of scrimmage. So cool formation, cool little motion. Watch the pass pro. Excellent. You can see the back kind of falls into Parsons here. When I'm saying be a guardrail, boop. The right tackle's in a tough spot. Oversets, gets beat inside. The back puts him back on. Now, that's probably by luck for where the linebacker is, but we'll take it. Again, watch the little motion down here to the bottom. So a thing that I like to say here, especially on third down, is when you have multiple people who are open, so I'm saying this is where the speed out goes, that's obviously open. This little underneath route, that's also open. So first down here, first down here, I think that's good design. You, know, you pair it with, I think the number three is trying to get to the corner here. Probably not gonna be there in time. But that to me is, is options. That's what I wanna see in a pass game, especially when you're essentially closing down half the field. Right, You've only got three guys out on routes, Two of them are going to get your first downs. Pretty sweet. So well done. You know, maybe not a perfect throw, but jump up, body him up, big time conversion. Really, really impressive conversion. And again, the pass pro works. You know, I'm saying the back has 50 here to the right. 50's in the B gap. So we kind of luck into the double team on Parsons there. Really like Lamar Jackson's base here. Watch him hit his back foot. No heel click, no wasted movement. The ball is out with that whip-like throw. Whoom, right on him, first down, massive first down. Then coming out of the two-minute here, second and nine. This is probably my favorite call of the game. This is power read. We've, so, we've shown a bunch of zone read, zone read escort, bash GT, Q pin and pull. Haven't shown power read all day. Now we get to double team Parsons. He starts on the open edge. So watch where 11 is here, starting on our left. Okay, he's head up. He's on the four eye, just inside the left tackle. We're going to shift. Now watch 42 in the left tackle, double team here on the power read. This is called a tray block. Boom, right in the ribs, bro. Thank you. Thunder. Boom. And then we are reading six. Poor six. You talk about being in a blender, bro. 
thanks for tackling the back here. Okay, that's who we're reading. We're tackling the uh, guy coming across. That's So we're reading six right here. Shuffle, shuffle. Okay, All these guys are gap down backer. So gap down, gap down. Here's that tray block all the way to here. And then we are pulling for that play side inside linebacker, whoever shows up here. It's pretty sweet. Look at these guys. They're going this way. We got them. We got them. Haven't seen Power Reed all day run themselves out of this thing. And Lamar Jackson gets us the first down to close this thing out. I just love, love the double team on 11. Boom. And when we, we wanted it all day, we're able to get it right there and close this thing out. What an awesome, awesome run. Great call, too. Had this in your back pocket, waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. Again, you can see how fired up they are after this thing. Look at the guys celebrating after the run. I mean, they are just literally kicking the shit out of these guys at the line of scrimmage. Straight up awesome. <laughs> Look at 42. Track 42 here. Okay, Bunch of guys pick up Lamar Jackson. Always a great sign when the bigs are picking up the ball carrier. Pick them up and then own the moment. Outstanding. Love it. Love the energy, the vibe to go into Jerry's world and absolutely just continue to punch them in the face. Double team at the point. It'd be even better if he could keep his feet. But that is a beautiful job. Great job by Lamar Jackson getting the first down, lowering his shoulder. That is awesome. So that is a wrap. Lamar Jackson, the Ravens, big win on the road in Jerry's world. I loved the plan. I love Lamar Jackson's execution of the plan. His ability in the quarterback run game is just a differentiator. There's just almost nothing else like it across the NFL. And the ability for him to be able to lean into it and kind of the robust library of plays, right? We saw the split flow escort. We saw just traditional zone read. We saw Q pin and pull. We saw the power read at the very end. Just outstanding. And then you layer on a few really easy, simple throws. I felt like they didn't have to throw much. And so it was one of those things where he did exactly what the plan needed him to do, and he did it at a very high level. It was a blast to break down. I think if you're a fan of the channel, maybe if you're a patron, you know how much I love the run game. I think when you see the quarterback run game ex executed like this, it's borderline unstoppable. And so it's one of those things where will you be able to do this much quarterback run over the course of a season? Probably not. But you can see maybe kind of the bones, the fingerprints, the kind of blueprint to what maybe the Ravens at their best are looking like at the end of the year. It probably looks something like this. So thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.